everyone. This is Angie of the Painted Feather coming at you live on the Chalk Paint 101 page. I'm going to turn on my comments. If anybody is out there watching, say hello to me. Tell me where you're from. I went live and I can hear the trash trucks out front. So um, if you hear trash trucks, I apologize, but I can't control that. So anyway, um, it is one o'clock here on the West Coast. I'm in California. I live about an hour north of San Francisco. So um, I'm in Santa Rosa, California. And if you are just tuning in, my name is Angie and I am with The Painted Feather by Angie. And I am a retailer of Dixie Bell paint products and also redesign with Prima transfers. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about painting on fabric and blending. And this is gonna be a super fun project. I actually am probably gonna do a few different um, lives on this one. I'm gonna be live at this time slot for every Thursday, one o'clock on the West Coast, four o'clock on the East Coast. Hello Val from Michigan, welcome. So thank you for joining me today. Um, so today I'm gonna to be talking about Dixie Bell paint products and painting on fabric and blending. And I'm gonna talk about doing um, different colors today. I don't know if you can see, oh, that's really bright because I have some lights on there. Uh, Moonshine Metallic and Silver Bullet. And if this is reversed, it's because I have my camera reversed. So Moonshine Metallic Silver Bullet, Rustic Red by Dixie Bell. This is an awesome color, Caribbean Moonshine Metallic Dixie Bell. Mine has a little love on it, right? You can see that. And then my base coat of this is going to be Caviar. It's really hard and tricky with those lights. So Caviar. And there is one other color, where did I put it? Um, the other color that I'm going to use is Manatee Gray. So um, we will get started with that. Now I'm wondering where my Manatee Gray went. Um, I will find it in a moment. But anyway, I'm gonna tell you how I prepped my piece so that you know how to paint fabric. And this is not one size fits all. You're gonna have to decide um, if you need all these steps or not. But I'm gonna tell you what I did with this and feel free to ask me questions and tell me where you're watching from and tell me if you've ever used Dixie Bell paint products before. And if you haven't, I could talk on and on and on about them. So. Um, Anyway, I use these products every day. I'm a retailer. I paint lots and lots of furniture and I like to paint things that are not necessarily in the box what you traditionally see painted. Um, in the past few weeks, I've been painting ammunition cans. I've painted mailboxes um, and today I'm going to do this dress form. So um, first of all, this is this dress form is a little bumpy and it has lots of piling up on the fabric. So I actually sanded this and I'm going to show you how I did that really quick because um, a lot of you might be newer to painting and not necessarily used to using um, the tools that you need to do. And I just want to tell you, don't be worried about it. Don't be scared about it. Just get in there and try it out and don't be afraid to fail because you know, you're going to learn something and then you can try it again. And if you just keep on trying, you'll figure it all out and post questions to these chalk paint pages because you will find out so much information and there are just a multitude of videos on YouTube and on like the, the chalk paint 101 site um, you know just get become part of the community and you can figure out a lot of things pretty quick and just post questions if you have questions you know I'm always on there answering questions so follow me at the painted feather by Angie and you can ask me questions you can send me questions anytime I could seriously talk about this stuff like 24 seven. So anyway, um, you might think it's weird to be sanding fabric, but this fabric, I wouldn't sand all fabrics, but this one has kind of a, a hard surface behind it and it has all this little piling. So I'm just going to show you, I've already sanded it, but I just want to show you real quickly how I do that. So I've got my DeWalt sander and it's really dirty because I use it all the time, but hello, I dropped you. Hold on one second. It's windy here in California. Okay, 
bear with me. Technical difficulties. Okay, are we still here? Sorry about that, everybody. I dropped you. Okay. So, we're good? We're good. Okay. <laughs> here we go. I've got my sander. I'm just going to lightly sand here. Make sure I'm not pulling a wire. That's what happened before. Okay, not pulling a wire now. too tough. So I'm not going to keep my sander on because it's probably annoying to listen to, but just wanted you to see how I do that and how I go about that. It's not real difficult to do. I'm going to adjust you because when I dropped you, we got a little jostled here. So, okay, here we go. So when painting fabric, you want to get the fabric damp before you apply the paint. So that's what we're going to do first. And anytime I'm painting, I'm always using my continuous mist spray bottle. So, oh gosh, it is windy here, guys. Sorry. I might have to uh, make an adjustment with my setup today. Okay, here we go. I'm just gonna move something. Hold on one second. I've got lights here and things are not cooperating with me. So I'm gonna put this one down. Okay see if we can keep it going. Okay, I see there's still people on here, so thank you for hanging in with me. Um, I'm gonna put that light down. Okay, so we're gonna get our fabric wet and my, my spray bottle just got knocked over, so I'm grabbing that. Okay, so this is a continuous mist spray bottle and you can get these from Dixie Bell retailers. You can get these at your uh, beauty supply, um, just wherever. Um, you, you, if you do, get they, I can't talk. Okay, start over. Hi, you can, yes, you can watch this later and it will be on replay and hashtag replay if you watch it later. So anyway, you can get this from a Dixie Belle retailer or you can get this at a beauty supply or Amazon. It's a continuous mist spray bottle. And this is different than a regular spray bottle. See the really, really small water droplets? Okay, so. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and just spray. I've already done half of this bodice. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, I've already done half of this just to give you guys an idea of what was going to happen. So I'm going to do the other half now. So here we go. So just get your misting spray bottle. If you don't have a misting spray bottle, you could use a regular spray bottle as well. So misting spray bottle. And there's a little boo-boo here on the fabric, but that's not gonna show once it's painted, so I don't really care. Okay, the wind's kicking up a little bit. Now I'm nervous about it. I think it'll be okay. I'm a yoga instructor also, and you have to just relax with what is. That was my lesson last week. I've been doing this program, and it's all about relaxing with what is. Hello from Alabama, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Thank you for tuning in. So the wind sometimes will blow things over and you just gotta keep going. Not what you want to happen when you're live on a, on a Facebook page, but that's okay. All right, here we go. So I have properly dampened, excuse my reach there, um, properly dampened my um, dress form here. Hi, Iva. Is it Eva, Iva? I hope I'm saying your name right. Hello, where are you from? Hi, Hazel, Massachusetts. Hello. Have you guys used Dixie Bell products before? They're really awesome. I actually used to use them so much and then I couldn't get them quick enough, so I became a retailer so that I have all the products all the time because that's how I roll. So, okay, I am going to use caviar first as my base and yeah hobby lobby has the spray bottle right okay oh i did okay thank you i said it right you are from wisconsin wisconsin in the house so i'm opening up make sure you shake your paint i shook all these up really really well before i started because i like to be prepared and if you're prepared things still fall over on you but that's 
how it goes. Okay, so I'm shaking out my paint. And this is a pretty big area. And I'm gonna go over this whole thing and create a base coat because I really want like a dark under layer. So I'm gonna do black caviar on the undercoat. And I'm gonna put it right on my brush here. This is already damp. And even when I'm painting furniture, I like to keep my, my brush wet or damp, not wet, just a little damp. So you can spray right on your brush and you can spray the surface of what you're painting. Just don't get it too wet because you don't want, um, you don't want to thin the paint out too much, but here we go. Okay, I'm gonna show you how quick and easy it is to get the black on here. And if it goes over on this other side, I'm not worried because I'm gonna blend it. So you guys ask me questions if you want, tell me where you're from. I'm typically, I typically have my products at a place called Whistle Stop Antiques in Santa Rosa, California, but Whistle Stop is not open right now because of COVID-19. So until then, I have all my products at home. So if you need something, send me a message. I can check my stock and I ship all over the United States. So, or you can find a local Dixie Bell retailer, support your local people. They are probably closed down right now too. So, okay. Just gonna get this first coat of paint on here. And then I'm gonna add Manatee Gray. So I'll be putting Manatee Gray on here. And then I'm gonna blend in a couple of other colors. And this, by the way, is the Oval Medium Brush by Dixie Bell. It's a really good brush to get a pretty, you know, big coat, pretty good coat of paint on there. Hi, Bo, how are you? Bowtie Treasures. Your name's probably not Bo. What is your name? <laughs> how are you? Welcome, Bowtie Treasures is on. I just saw Bo, that was Bowtie. Okay. I have big plans for this dress form. I'm gonna, um, I'll show you, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do with it in a little bit. I just had an image in my head of what I wanted it to look like. And we're gonna, I'm gonna do this over a series so you guys can tune in. Hi, Angie Thomas. Yes, you have a great name too. Welcome. Um, I don't know a whole lot of Angies. Do you know a whole lot of Angies? Actually, my, one of my best friend's name is Angie and it's her birthday today. So if you're watching Angie, happy birthday. She's in Bakersfield, California. I'm in Northern California. That's more Central Valley, but anyway. Hi, Katie. Katie, are you supposed to be working right now? Taking a little break? Thank you for joining me. Katie's been painting a lot of things. Katie's a cool chick, she's a carpenter. She just got on here. She does all kinds of cool crafty things. So don't be afraid to try new things and to, um, to use power tools if you don't. I've been watching these vlogs for a while for well, the, like the Chalk Paint 101, and people jump on and they ask questions, and don't feel silly to ask questions because that's how you learn. And I've been painting furniture for about five years, and I love it, and you just keep on trying different things. And I learn new things like every single day, and I'm always trying to find out, um, you know, just how to do different things. I'll, I'll watch these videos and I'm like, how did that person do that? And usually they'll tell you how, how they did it, but sometimes if they've already gone past a step and you don't get it explained, you gotta research it and figure it out. Okay, can you still see me? Yeah. All right. So just gotta keep your fabric damp so that it goes on nice and smooth and I've painted fabric before, but I didn't know that I was supposed to get it damp first, and it didn't work out so well. So make sure you get your fabric damp. And I wasn't using Dixie Belle paint either, so I used to make my own chalk paint, and that's okay, but then I didn't like all the little 
chunks of the calcium carbonate like in my paint. Maybe somebody else has a better, better method to do it, but for me, I like all the colors that Dixie Belle comes in and I like to be able to just open it up, shake it up, use it. Okay, see how nice that's covering? Can't even tell what color it was before. Eventually, I'm going to put some transfers on this and I tested out a spot because typically you don't put transfers on fabric, but this has um, kind of the core of this is real strong and stiff and so the fabric is stretched over that so I have something that I can um, I can work with as far as a really strong support behind the fabric and so that allows me to put a transfer on plus it's not like I'm gonna wash this this is what I put my aprons on and what I put my mask on and my goggles so it's kind of it's a very utilitarian thing but I still want it to look cool because it's in my workspace so if you are watching tell me where you're at anybody local here besides Katie I'm in Northern California anybody else from California watching right now oh you're welcome Katie yeah there are no dumb questions you don't ask well I mean Sometimes, sometimes they don't, they look kind of silly, but when you're learning, there are no dumb questions. So here we go. Okay, so I've got my black on there and oh, from Ohio. Hi, Debbie. Um, I don't want my, my beautiful paintbrush to dry out. So I'm going to take my misting bottle and I'm gonna get this really damp because I, don't want to ruin a brush so if you are in a pinch and you're in the middle of doing something you don't want to stop just get a plastic bag what am I doing with it when I'm done so um, I am going to just have my my aprons on it it's just gonna be in my workspace it's just kind of a funny uh, fun thing that I got at a thrift shop and I'm gonna put my I have work, my work aprons and I have my mask and my um, my goggles that I use when I'm sanding the heck out of stuff. So this is this holds that. So it's just gonna be a really, really pretty place to, to hang those things. So, okay, so I'm done with my black and now I wanna use my manatee gray. So um, I left it right here. So hold on one second, let me grab it. I'm still here. Okay, got my manatee gray. Thank you. Yeah, it's just a fun thing. I like to take different things and and make them personalized. So, okay. My favorite, favorite brush is the Mini Angle. So I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna have to get my scrubby soap out and clean this one later, but um, hello from North Carolina. Hi, Sandy. So here's my Mini Angle brush, my favorite, favorite brush. So I'm going to take and go into my paint here. Manatee Gray is a great neutral gray color. A little bit of a blue undertone to it, but really nice, really nice color. So see how I have this? This is where we're headed, okay? So I'm just gonna go over it, start laying down the gray. This is not a blending brush, but when you're using, when you're doing fabric, it's a little bit different. So I'm, and, and I don't want this to be like a perfect, perfect um, application. I want this to look a little bit kind of um, modeled, a little not, not exactly symmetrical. So I'm just going in with this color, but I want to brighten it up enough so that my transfers will show. So. I'll show you what transfers I'm gonna use on this. I'm actually gonna use two different types of transfers on this. So you just keep on putting paint on, wetting it down so that the colors blend. And then I'm gonna add some more colors. So just add the misting spray bottle. One of the set of transfers 
is a steampunk transfer. Misted nor mist. Okay, yeah, it's a, it's a misting spray bottle. So you keep yeah, putting the mist on there. Somebody was asking a question about that. Hi, Lee. Where are you from, Lee? Let me know where you're at. Welcome. Okay. So just keep on putting on the paint. So I, I basically had the whole layer of caviar on here, and now I'm going over it with my manatee gray, because I wanted that real dark, kind of, you know, dark grounded coat coming through, but then I'm blending it with this gray just to, to lighten it up a little bit, but it wouldn't be the same if I just used just the gray. So I'm, I want to give it dimension, so I want that dark underneath. Hi, Sonia. How are you? Are you painting that frame today, Sonia? A couple local people watching right now. So, somebody from Arkansas. Lee is from Arkansas. All right. So I like how that's looking. I don't want it to be completely covered up. And I'm also going to use a couple other colors. So I'm blending that out. The one thing I don't like is it's a little little thick right there and I'm just gonna cover a little bit of when I went over not so worried about it because I'm gonna put transfers and all kinds of things on that you don't have to add wax when painting fabric never painted fabric so I'm going to seal the fabric with a spray wax but you don't have to put wax on oh somebody from the UK another Angie oh same Angie same Angie but she's in the UK welcome um, so you don't have to put wax on this before you put the paint on, no. You just, you have to get the um, fabric wet or damp and then go ahead and apply, apply your paint. So, okay, I think that's, I'm gonna add just a little bit more. Just keep on adding paint till it looks how you want it to look and then go on to your next color. You finished a project. I'm talking to Sonia now with some of the gel stain, painting the frame tomorrow. Perfect. Sonia's getting into the chalk paint. I love when people start doing this stuff and then they see how easy it is and then they look at their surroundings and it's like, okay, what else can I paint? And then you can turn your surroundings into something that you really, really, um, really like, you know, you can make your surroundings reflect who you are as a person, and that's what I love about this. Hi, Monique, welcome. This is your, is this your first time on the Chalk Paint 101 page? This is my first time doing a live on this page, so happy to be here. Okay, next color. So, again, this is my, um, my mini angle brush, and I am going to get it damp because I'm gonna put it in this baggie I don't want it to dry out. These brushes, when you invest in these brushes, they, they're a little bit pricey, but you're gonna have these brushes for like ever if you take care of them, so just so you know. Okay, next color. I've got three other colors that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the Moonshine Metallic Caribbean. I'm gonna do the Silver Bullet. My hands are looking really good right now, but I have my scrubby soap for later. Hi, Roxanne, new follower and beginner from Ontario, Canada, welcome. You're gonna have so much fun with all of this stuff. Like, it's just endless, the projects that you can do. I mean, I, I literally paint, sometimes I paint two or three things in a day. It just depends on the, the size of the project. Um, yeah, I've been painting a lot of, a lot of things lately. So, okay, I do a lot of custom work for people. Um, I feel like I'm like a paint coach. People send me messages and it's like, okay, here's what you do. And um, I think my fitness instructor background probably has a lot to do with that. It's like, okay, take it step by step. All right, here we go. So this, you can see kind of the metallic-y sheen. Hopefully you can see that. I'm gonna bring you in, see if you can see that. 
See that beautiful metallic color and how it kind of blends from one color to the next, the next and you can see the dimension in it. So, oh, thank you, Monique. Make, Monique said she loves all my tips. Um, I am happy to answer questions. So you guys can private message me and ask me questions and I usually respond pretty quick. So send me a message and I'll, I'll give you, if I know the answer, I'll tell you. If I don't know the answer, I'll Google it and I'll figure it out because that's how I learn stuff too. If somebody throws a question at me and I don't know, I like to, I like to figure it out. Okay. My hand looks really good now, but my hands are always like this. All right, so metallic, going over this pretty heavily. Want a little bit more up here. There's no right or wrong with this stuff. When you're painting furniture, it might be a little bit different, but you could also do a piece that's very free flowing too. All right, so I'm gonna add a little water here to blend this. See how it just starts to become like, go from one color to the next. Okay, and this is, like I said, this is not really typically a blending brush, but on this fabric, it works just fine. I'm using four brushes today. All right, let's turn it. I'm add a little moisture, a little water there. And I just wanna give this a nice sheen. Okay, and I, and I don't wanna see that center line where I kind of stopped. So I'm gonna blend that out a little bit. All right, I think that's pretty good. And now, and it's interesting, this color right here, this looks kind of a pinky color, but it's, it's the rustic red that's blended in there. So I'm gonna show you that. I'm gonna do the Moonshine Metallic first. But see how that's developing there? This side doesn't have quite the depth that this side is has because I have two more colors on here. And when you're painting something, one color, if you just look at one color on something, it's not gonna look as interesting or um, catch the eye as much as two or three colors. So just keep that in mind. You know, even when you're doing a one color coat, you can enhance it with like a glaze or a wax to just really make certain features pop. So. And with this, I'm actually trying to tie in colors that are gonna be on the transfer. So that's, that's where I'm at with this whole thing. Okay, I'm gonna grab one more brush. All right, I'm gonna go in with my metallic blue. And I'm not gonna use as much of the metallic blue. I'm just gonna, it's kind of gonna be an accent. So I'm gonna start down here around the hip area. And I'm just gonna blend it. Just a little bit. Very like free form. And then just blend it in. And then I'll go around the back. But it's really, for me, I have all of my products at my home right now, so I have access to so many transfers and um, so many colors that I'll think about things that I have already at home, and I start kind of putting puzzle pieces together. It's like, okay, what am I gonna use on that? And last night I was thinking about this, and I have two different transfers that I'm going to use. I'll show you those. Okay. Kind of blend it. Just keep working it until it gets to be how you want it to look. Oh, somebody's grinding something. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Okay, see how that looks really, really heavy right there? But I'm going to blend it out. A little spray. And you're creating new colors where it's blending with the other color, and 
and just makes it really interesting looking. And you can see, like on here, you can see the different um, kind of striations of the fabric. So, really neat. All right, and just go down the center here. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's kind of, what do you think? Pretty good? Okay, I think that's pretty good. I can go back later if I don't like something and add or change. So just try it out. All right, where are y'all watching from? If I have anybody new on here that hasn't told me, say hello, tell me where you're at. It's a little after one o'clock here on the West Coast. Just painting. Okay, next color, last one, rustic red. Shake up your paint. And this paint goes really far, by the way. Dixie Belle paint, um, it covers pretty much twice as much as like a latex paint. Hello from the Texas coast, Celia, welcome. So if you look at the price of Dixie Belle paint, it's, it's actually less than a lot of other chalk paints and the coverage is really great and it's self-leveling too which means that you don't have to work really hard to get a beautiful finish on something from st louis hi candy from st louis welcome uh, so yeah self-leveling means that it's going to do the work for you as far as making a really really smooth beautiful even surface so that's another thing that i love about dixie bell paint okay so now I'm gonna go in with my rustic red. I'm gonna get this brush, I'm gonna spray this brush so that it doesn't dry out. Put it right into my plastic bag with the other brushes and I'm gonna wash those after this live. So now I'm going to use my French tip brush because I only wanna do this rustic red just in a few little spots on here. So. Hi Elena from Miami, Florida. Welcome, Dixie Bell is located in Florida. Actually, they're a Florida company. Great, great company. So, all right, I've got my rustic red on my French tip brush here. Let's see, I'm gonna come around the neck. I think I'm gonna kind of outline where the dress form is outlined here. So. I kind of did that a little bit on the other side. So I like to go along the lines sometimes when I'm accenting, like if you're doing a drawer, um, going around the perimeter of the drawer when you're blending sometimes looks really, really nice. So you see how, see how red that looks right now, okay? I'm gonna show you, just blending it a little bit, how much better it's gonna look and, and different. Just get your, get your misting spray. Just start blending it. And it's creating all these different colors and it's just not like a blob on there. It's, it, it's kind of morphing from one color to the next. guys done any crazy projects like this one? I guess it's not crazy. It's just a little different. Anybody working on something right now? All right. See how it's just blending nicely and now you can't really see it's not like a super dark red anymore. Add just a little bit on the back here. I think I'll go along right through there. A little, just a little touch goes a long way. All right. And I don't.
don't know if you can see it, but I actually, I, I'll, I'll bring it in in a second here to show you my test spot for the transfers I'm gonna use. I wanted to try it out to see if it would actually um, adhere to the fabric on here and it looks great. So then I was, I decided to just go for it with this. And I'm gonna be taking you guys step by step through this for the next few weeks. And next week, I will be applying the transfers. So you can see how I, the method to my madness for doing that. So I'll show you that. Okay, I think that is pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna put my cap back on my paint here. And get my brush nice and damp so that it doesn't dry out into the baggie it goes. So let me see if I can show you. So I'm going to be using the Steampunk Transfer and um, let me see, actually it fell over when, when I lost my, when everything fell. So hold on one second, I'm gonna grab it. Okay, I've got it. All right, here we go. So, this is called the Steampunk. It's gonna be reversed maybe for you. Oh, it's really bright there. Okay, Steampunk Transfer. And then this one is called Lavender Bush. And these are both by Redesign with Prima. And a lot of the Dixie Belle retailers are also Redesign with Prima retailers. You can see all the pretty flowers on here. I'm gonna show you what they look like. I've already used these transfers on a lot of different projects or a few different projects. And I'll show you my mailbox in a second here, but okay. I like skulls. So I'm gonna use this as there's all these gears and really neat colors. And so you can maybe see why I came up with this color palette. So I'm gonna use these on here and I'm also I'm gonna mix it I'm gonna use really pretty florals as well this, these have French writing and florals so I'm gonna do a few different or a couple different um, transfers to come up with my beautiful um, you know this dress form I think that'll look really really nice on here but also give it a little edge with the steampunk. So I'm going to bring you in so I can show you. See how that looks on there? So, and I mean, it's, it's on there. It's not coming off. So anyway, um, if you want to see me finish this, I'm going to be doing live at the same time slot every Thursday, 1 o'clock on the West Coast, 4 o'clock p.m. on the East Coast. So you can follow the, um, the story of the dress form and see how it turns out. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And um, to find Dixie Belle paint products, you can go to DixieBellePaint.com. You can click on that link in the description of this video. You can send me a private message and ask me if I have it in stock because I have a pretty good amount of stock right now and I ship out very quickly. So send me a message. I'm happy to give you a quote and send it to you. And feel free to send me messages um, you know, about just questions that you have or if I didn't answer your question on here, happy to answer questions anytime for you. And follow me at The Painted Feather by Angie on Facebook. Um, on Instagram, the painted underscore feather. I have a YouTube page, and that is the painted feather by Angie. And I also have a website, www.thepainted-feather.com. So um, thank you for joining me on the Chalk Paint 101 Facebook page. I'll be back next week. Um, actually, I told you I was going to show you something. Hold on one second. I'm going to show you my mailbox I did. Okay. Here I am. Okay, here it is. Let's see. Isn't this cute? I did this with that floral transfer. I used gilding wax, and this is Mason Dixon Gray. It's 
Isn't that fun? Roxanne, can't wait to see how it turns out. Yeah, check back next week. Tune in next week. And um, yeah, I just put gator hide on this yesterday. Isn't that cute? And I did a live on the Dixie Bell page on this last week too. So if you go over to their site, you can see how I did that. So anyway, uh, thank you for tuning in. Um, have a wonderful rest of your Thursday. And yeah, that mailbox is really cute. Monique came out really, really great. So, all right. And um, be sure to get over. I would really love it if you go over and follow me on my Facebook and my Instagram pages. All right. Thanks so much. Happy Thursday. See you all soon.